Hey there, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make the FT891 have a pan adapter. And so check out the video description for any of the parts that you'll need for this project. And if you use the Amazon affiliate links, I'll get a little cut back from it. But hey, it helps out the channel and thank you for your support. And now I'd like to show you how I installed the pan adapter into the FT891 and got it going on a Linux computer. Let's go. To get this party started, we need to go to sdr-kits.net website, and we need to get the HUPRF board. And for the FT891, that is a 70 megahertz intermediate frequency board. And you also need to get the wiring and the connector for this kit. And all of this comes out, even with shipping, to just under 30 some odd dollars. So it is super inexpensive to get started. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take apart our radio. And you're gonna see a danger warning pop up on your screen in just a second. I am not responsible for your rig, you are. And by following my advice, you're following my advice and that's it. You are taking apart an expensive radio and doing some surgery on it. So you take on that responsibility. So we're gonna take both the top and the bottom off. The reason I did that is so I can have access in case any metal shavings get stuck in there, we can dump them out because we are going to drill some holes in the back of your rig. And next we're gonna open the package. And what I don't show here is the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solder a couple of wires to the HUP RF board. And then I'm going to put it in some one and a quarter inch heat shrink. And I'm gonna heat shrink it so that it won't come in contact with anything on the inside of the radio that could cause a short or anything of the sort. Now we'll move on to making some connections. There are five wires we need to solder to this board, and that is the positive input and the ground for the input. Then you have the positive voltage to the board, and after that you have positive output, and you have the ground for the output or the common. Floating head here, let's talk about this installation botch job here. Yeah, so it's a little crooked, forgive me. It's also a little bit high, forgive me. And it's a little bit to the right, forgive me. Yeah, I had to cut out a little bit out of the lid to make this work. Oh well, I'll learn next time. Drill two holes in the back and then put the screws through the RF connector and through those holes. Put one of the lugs on the back so that you can solder a wire to it for the common connection. And that will complete everything that we need to do back here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to trim the coax cable and that red arrow is showing you the heat shrink board with all of the wire soldered to it and coming out. I'm going to use this knife to take out the outer plastic sheath and then you're going to take the braid and pull it out so that you can solder it here. And you can see I'm soldering in the output which is the center conductor on the coax and then we're going to put the ground of the output in the very next scene to that little solder lug. Now, each arrow is going to show you which wire you soldered to the board. So I hope you kept them straight when you put them in the heat shrink. Alrighty, so they, this kit comes with some tape that you can put to hold that down and keep it from wobbling around. And I, <clears throat> I guided this to the outside of the board. Now, using banana for scale, you're about to be doing some tiny stuff. Legit tiny soldering. So, be very careful at this point. Do not exert any pressure. If you have a way to magnify it, that would be even better, but here's where we're putting it, right there on those parts, right next to that. So, these are two capacitors and one resistor. And the tip of that wire is legit how big two of these are. That is such a tiny little area. This is going to be the input, the positive input to the HUP RF board. It's coming off of that IF tap right there. And that is 69.450 megahertz. Next, we're going to do the ground. And you can just use the screw in the back corner on the circuit board for this. Little bit of a pain to get back there, but I think you can make it work. 
And so that screw is just right there. You just take it out, put one of those solder connectors on there, and make it go. Solder the ground to that little tab, and then you're screwing it down. Now, this guy right here, we've got to pull this off gently. And behind that ribbon cable, you're going to find this test point. And that test point is what we're going to solder to. And this is where you're going to get about 8 volts, which is going to power the HUP RF board. So just put you a little dollop of daisy right there. Then you're going to put that ribbon cable back where it came from gently. Be very careful with this. If you break it, you're going to have to get you a new one from Yesu. That might be pretty difficult. Then you gently pop that back in. Make sure it's secure. And I believe we are done. So this is what it looks like. You have the heat shrink the heat shrink over the circuit board with the wires coming out. Yeah, that was a clutch job. So sorry about that. You'll do a better job than I did. And there's where the, <clears throat> the output connects from the IF. And now let's go to the computer. I chose Linux for this. And that is because everything was free. And I figured it would be more of a challenge. So you're going to go to SDR++. It's going to take you to GitHub. And the one that worked for me, you can see I'm hovering over it and clicking it to download it right now. That was the deb file that worked for me. And it's point and click. Listen, if you have no experience in Linux, this is kind of fun. It opens up the, the, the manager, and then you just click Install. And then you put in your little password, and then boom, it's done. Now, I already had it installed. I forgot that I had it installed. I thought I uninstalled it, but I didn't. But that's beside the point. That's all you have to do. It will take care of everything for you. And there's my apology. I already installed it. And you'll find that with libham, hamlib, sorry, it's actually called libhamlib. But uh, I already had this installed, but this is what it's called, lib ham lib 4t64 and that ham library is a fantastic tool to communicate with your radio now you can see i typed it in wrong at first and i kept this mistake in there that's your easter egg for today and you can see i already had it installed now using it is not that bad so follow along if you read up on it, there's other videos on how to use it, but I'm going to show you the commands that work for the FT891. We need to get the RTL SDR. This is what we're going to use because there's no further drivers to install to make this work in Linux. It's probably one of the easiest SDR dongles to use. So we're going to find fire up SDR++. And there's a few things you have to do. The first thing you're going to go to is your source, and you're going to get RTL SDR. And then you're going to select it. So when, once you've plugged it in, it should show up. And there's some more things. There's your bandwidth, and there's a couple things. Just make it look like I made it, and you'll have exactly like what I have. But don't be afraid to click around. If you mess something up, just go back and fix it. It's really actually pretty easy to use. There's a couple other things that we're going to do so that we can communicate with the radio, though. So the first thing to get the RTL-SDR going is you hit the play button. Now, the difference is <clears throat> right now it's receiving everything at 69.45 megahertz. Now, what you're seeing here is the sync, and we're not really going to use the radio for this. It's, it's not the sync. This is the radio. I just put it on CW and, and made the offset really small so I can kind of center that line on the frequencies. And the server, we're going to go ahead and kick that going. In here, this is that's the command right there. Rig control D, and the radio is dash M, and that is the radio number. And then you're going to do dev TTY USB 0, usually for the USB plug. And so just type that as you see it, and it should connect to your FT891. Then you'll be able to start the client for rig control. And it has 69450000. That's 69,450,000. That is going to offset 
your tuner so that it looks like exactly what it says on the radio. So actually, you're listening to 76.074. It's actually more than that. It's like 524. Do the math if you add 69 to it. And uh, in just a minute, I'm going to let you hear some of this stuff too as we tune around. But I also have a script that I wrote. And this script, there's some out there, but I couldn't get them to work. I don't know why. They haven't been touched in so long. But this should work even after I don't mess with this anymore. And this just connects to all of these pieces, and it works. It follows and talks to SDR++. And if you look up here at the top, here's the link to download this file. And you can get it straight from my website, w1rcp.com. Look down in the description if you missed it. And so all you have to do is start this up because I have everything programmed in there already. Uh, if you just look at the video and look at the port numbers, I did change the port number, and you can see it right there at the top. That's very important. There's two port numbers. I kept the numbers even. And that's pretty much it. Now you can see that this thing just works. It is it is wonderful, a wonderful little project to work on. Okay, so hooking this up, if you hadn't figured it out, it's pretty easy. You take your SMA mail and you hook that to your SDR. SDR is in the USB to your computer. Pretty simple, right? You don't even have to have the volume of the radio on. It's just, I saw this on the waterfall and scrolled over to it. And the second thing is the USB is plugged in to control the rig. And I don't remember downloading any files or drivers in Linux for this. It just worked. And so when you turn the dial, you know, I was trying to go find some CW. So let's There's a faint station. I'm not using the awesomest of antennas. I'm just in the kitchen with that. So we're not gonna hear a lot. But the, the way that I did this was I made it so that the VFO would follow over here. And I thought that I had a 10 inch touchscreen and a Raspberry Pi, but I don't. So we can go over here and as you scroll down, you can see it's a little jumpy. It's not the best, but. RTTY. QRP. Huh, 80 something, 80 meters maybe. I don't know, I'm not really listening. But you can see that We can see it on the waterfall and it follows. And because it's bi-directional, if you saw something that you liked up here, it'll bring you pretty close to it. Now I chose up here just to leave. I chose just to leave this right here at CW. I'm not decoding with the computer, but if you wanted to, you can. The only thing is the um, the radio is supposed to go to the sink and I don't have any audio set up in this computer. Now I don't have a tuner. A lot of the stuff that you see on there is um, noise from computer w1 rcp whiskey one radio charlie papa so you can see your own signal on there so if we were to zoom in on that noisy spot right there whiskey one radio charlie papa testing That's a bad spot. A lot of noise.
And a lot of this is computer noise. Um, if I were to move my computer around or my radio around, you can see I can eliminate some of it depending on where everything is located. Whiskey one, radio Charlie Papa. Whiskey one, radio Charlie Papa. Testing, testing. That's upper sideband. We can do AM and it'll show you what AM looks like. It's pretty neat that you can see it. This is Whiskey One, Radio Charlie Papa, testing. Whiskey One, Radio Charlie Papa, testing. Ooh. Look at that, you could make a Spider-Man. Look at there, Spider-Man. All right, well, I am no SDR expert and not really a Linux expert. But I was able to fuss around with this, but it took me about two weeks to get this thing going. And that was a lot of fussing around and, and trying programs that I thought would work. So this is one solution that works. It's not all of the solution, but it is a solution. There are other ways to get this to work. And if you want to sit there and learn something new and fuss around with the SDR and Linux, this is the way to go. Absolutely. It was a fun, inexpensive project. And if you have any questions, surely pop it down into the comments below if i forgot something put it in the comments below and i'll edit the description if i need to for anything that i might have missed and i want to give a shout out to these members right here all right so i'm robbie w1rcp We'll catch you on the next project, 73.